Story recap here. Hey, I'm going to explain a drama romance film called Milena. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Renato, a 13-year-old boy from Castelcuto, Italy, recalls the day Il Duce, Mussolini, spoke to the nation and announced that he was declaring war against France and Great Britain. That same day, Renato received his first bike. Excited, Renato rides back to his friends as Mussolini's announcement plays on from speakers throughout the city. When he arrives, they commend his new bike before sitting down on the side, mesmerized, as they watch Milena walk down the street. Milena is the daughter of their Latin teacher, Professor Bonsignori, and as she moves past them, the group speeds away on their bikes multiple times, trying to keep their eyes on her. Admiring her beauty, Renato stares intensely at her every chance he gets. Later on, the group of friends heads to their Latin class. Renato contemplates the whole day, still in awe at Milena's beauty. The next day, the group of friends hangs out by a cliff, measuring their manhood, as they talk about Milena. Renato's friend mentions an encounter he had with Milena, annoying Renato and prompting him to tease his friend. Afterwards, Renato skips school and rides from Milena's house, where he daydreams about Milena, calling out to him and asking for cigarettes. However, his daydream is cut short as he stares at Milena's house with the doors closed. At home, his father is furious at him for skipping school, getting teased by his friends, and getting his pants altered. Later that night, Renato sneaks out of his room and goes to Milena's house again. Climbing a tree, he peeks through a hole in the window and looks inside the house, finding Milena lying down on a couch. Curious, he watches Milena walk around, listening to the radio before he spots a photo of her husband, Nino Scordia. In a barbershop the following day, the men inside talk about Milena and how she arrived in their town through Nino, who's currently fighting in the war. When Renato's number is called, he complains to the barber, asking him why he can't sit at the adult's chair. Of course, the barber simply tells him that he's still too young. After his haircut, Renato goes back to Milena's house, spying on her with a telescope and watching her as she dries herself by her garden. Later on, Renato climbs to the window, peeking through a hole to watch her work with her sewing machine. As he watches, Renato is surprised to see Milena's dress slightly falling off, revealing a part of her body. Later on, she starts dancing with a picture of Nino while a song plays in the background until it's time for her to return to her room. The following morning, Renato heads to a music store and asks for a copy of the song playing in Milena's house. Once home, he plays the song while looking at crude photos of women, and he imagines them all as Milena as he falls asleep. The next day, Renato returns to the cliff he and his friends hung out in, and he tries writing Milena a letter. There, he professes that he doesn't listen to the town's gossip and that he's the only man for her after her husband. Renato then rejoins his friends as they race to try and find Milena again. Then, he makes up an excuse to leave his friends before catching up to Milena. When he sees her, the men from the town are watching her walk along the road. The men greet her, but she keeps walking along while blankly staring at the ground. One man greets her, kissing her hand repeatedly, and all the other men watch with jealousy. Moving on, Milena stares at Lieutenant Cadi standing by a balcony before quickly removing her gaze from him. As she arrives at her destination, Renato sees her catching a key for a door leading to an apartment. Later on in Latin class, some of the students make crude jokes about Milena, disgusting Renato. As the students leave, Renato watches the students walk down the stairs to spit on them. After this, Renato heads to a repairman to fix his bike, and from there, he spots Milena again. Renato could only watch her while the women in town gossip with each other, sickened by Milena's presence. One of the women compares her to Gina, an escort in the town. Milena heads for the apartment again, with Renato still following her. He then climbs the gate nearby to see who Milena is seeing, revealing it to be her father. Later in the night, Renato is at home, touching himself as he listens to the song again, thinking of Milena all the way. The next day, during their morning exercises, one of Renato's friends informs him that Nino Scordia has died in battle. Later, Renato attends a memorial for Nino. During the memorial, two girls get giddy as they stare at Lieutenant Cadei, talking about how handsome he is. After leaving, Renato returns to Professor Bonsignori's apartment and sees Milena in bed, crying in grief over the loss of her husband. In Renato's imagination, he goes to Milena's side, comforting and assuring her that he'll be there for her before Milena hugs him. Later, during Nino's funeral procession, Milena poses as the Virgin Mary, looking dreadful while a very concerned Renato watches her from below. After the procession, he overhears some of the townspeople gossiping and slandering Milena yet again, angering Renato and spurring him to spit in their drinks and urinate in their bags. Renato then leaves for a church and prays to a saint, asking him to protect Milena from the townspeople. Leaving the theater, Renato heads out, and he soon spots Milena leave a store. The men from the store talk about her crudely, and when Renato overhears this, he throws a rock at the store, breaking the window then riding away. After that, Renato sits close to Milena's house, and a battalion of German soldiers walk by. When Milena enters her home, Renato walks over to her yard and grabs a pair of her underwear before running back to his bike to head home. Back in his room, Renato touches himself again, holding Milena's underwear close to him and imagining the two of them together until he falls asleep. The next day, Renato's father walks into Renato's room and finds him still asleep with the underwear draped over his head. His father throws a fit, telling Renato that he's ashamed of him while the rest of Renato's family catches on. After scolding him, Renato's father locks him inside his room while Renato's mother burns the underwear as she cries in shame. Three days pass, and Renato's mother is concerned for her son, who hasn't eaten yet. Then, she complains about how the fascists treat them. The following day, a doctor visits Renato to check on him, and he informs his family that he needs to get out. Afterwards, Renato rides his bike to Milena's house again, and the streets are now filled with more people and vehicles. Arriving there, he sees Lieutenant Cadei, along with other men, staring at Milena's house. As the day goes by, Renato is in the middle of a report in class when suddenly, a man comes in and hands a letter to Professor Bonsignori. In the letter, someone wrote that the professor is dishonored as his daughter has been sleeping with the whole town. Heartbroken, the professor leaves his class, and the students are left to gossip about the letter. Insulted, Renato fights one of the students, all while imagining himself as a gladiator for Milena. At night, Renato returns to Milena's home and finds Lieutenant Cadei inside, speaking to her. Renato is angered by what he sees, especially when Lieutenant Cadei kisses Milena before saying goodbye. On his way out, the lieutenant bumps into the dentist, Dr. Kusumano. 
the dentist berates him for pestering Milena, who he calls his fiance. Kusimano slaps Lieutenant Kadei first, and though the lieutenant initially refused to retaliate, he fights back when he gets slapped a second time. The two fight, and it isn't long until Dr. Kusimano's wife arrives with the police in tow. She furiously calls her husband an adulterer, and while the police try to break up the men's fight, she goes in front of Milena's house, cursing her and telling her to steal husbands from her own village instead. Meanwhile, Renato can only watch with an incredulous look on his face as the police start arresting the two fools. The following day, the townspeople gossip about last night's incident, arguing over who was at fault. Many express their shock over Milena supposedly having two lovers, and they mention that the professor's already quit his teaching position in disgrace. The people also point out that Milena should go to court for luring a married man. Renato overhears this as he walks by, then starts looking for Milena again. Back in her father's apartment, Milena tries to unlock the door, but the key doesn't fit. Renato, watching from the side, realizes that the professor has given up on his daughter, and he just stares at Milena with a worried look. Later on, Milena walks to attorney Centorbi's office, asking for counsel, before proceeding to court. Inside the busy courtroom, Renato watches while Milena is put to trial. The judge proceeds to ask Milena questions about the dentist and their relationship. Milena tells the judge that Dr. Kusimano only visited her once to give medicine for her father and that he lied about being her fiancé. When the judge asks about Lieutenant Kadei, Milena tells him that their relationship is no concern of the law. However, the judge informs Milena that because of the incident, Lieutenant Kadei was questioned in a judicial inquiry before being transferred to Albania. With that, he asks his clerk to report Lieutenant Kadei's statement. Disappointed, Milena listens while the clerk informs everyone that Lieutenant Kadei had a casual view of his relationship with Milena, and he claims that they were only friends. Attorney Centorbi then starts speaking passionately, defending Milena and blaming Dr. Kusimano as he makes a case that Milena's only sin is her beauty and that she only wants to live a new life after her loss. When the court is dismissed, Milena and Attorney Centorbi head back to her house, and they dance while Renato watches from the window. Milena and Centorbi talk for a while before Centorbi makes his move on her, telling her that the only payment he wants is Milena herself. Renato watches in horror as Centorbi forces himself on Milena, trying to make her love him. In an attempt to get a better view, Renato moves to another branch, but it breaks, making the boy fall. The next day, Renato returns to the church and talks to the saint, telling him that he forgives Milena for what she did last night. He then tells the saint that he didn't protect Milena, so he breaks the saint's arm to make them even. In class, Renato continues to think about Milena, and he writes a letter to her, professing his love for her and how she doesn't deserve a man like Centorbi. Renato then imagines his professor as Milena but is cut off when his professor scolds him for doing the wrong activity. Renato storms out of the class, and he pushes a statue, making it fall off and break. Afterwards, Renato is with his family in the tailor. While Renato has long pants fit for him, his father listens to the radio, where there are talks of the continuous ally bombings. Leaving the tailor, Renato then spies on Centorbi, who is visiting his mother. Renato watches and laughs when his mother hits him, screaming at him in disapproval of Milena. After that, Renato follows Centorbi and finds him together with a teary-eyed Milena, and there, they end their relationship. This fills Renato with relief, and he goes ahead to the barbershop. After this, Renato continues to follow Milena while she's being pestered by men along the streets. She passes through an alley to avoid attention, and all of a sudden, she slows down. When Renato sees this, he thinks that Milena is walking towards him, so he slows down as well. To his disappointment, Milena walks past him and approaches Antonio, a man who gives her food. As Renato watches on, he suddenly hears loud engines, signaling the arrival of the Allied planes and making Renato run to his bike to escape while the Allies start bombing parts of the town. After the bombing run, Renato runs to one of the destroyed buildings, where soldiers pull Professor Bonsignori's body. Shortly after, Milena, together with her father's students, join the funeral procession for the professor. As he is put to rest, dozens of men line up to Milena, offering their condolences. Renato lines up as well, only to be cut off by an older man, and he eventually moves away when he sees more men whispering into Milena's ear. After the funeral, Milena returns home and starts cutting her hair and washing up while Renato helplessly watches from the door. A car suddenly drives up to Milena's house, making Renato hide. Antonio's friend Salvatore exits the car and knocks on Milena's door. After greeting him, she welcomes him inside. From the hole in the window, Renato is in tears as he watches Salvatore immediately force himself on Milena. While Salvatore pleasures himself, Milena stares coldly at the ceiling, leaving Renato to storm back home in his rage. The day after, more Germans occupy the town while Renato walks along the streets before seeing Milena. The sight completely transfixes him as Milena now has red hair, and she's wearing revealing clothes. The men around her look in amazement, and the women look at her with complete disgust while she makes her way to a table. Blank-faced, Milena gets out a cigarette, and all the men around her offer a lighter. Renato watches disappointedly. The next morning, Renato listens and watches as men inside the barbershop see Milena with blonde hair now. She's with the escort Gina, and together, they serve the Germans there. Because of this, Renato imagines the atrocities Milena and Gina do with the Germans in their hotel before eventually passing out. Renato's parents pick him up from the barbershop, and they take him to the church where they have him exorcised as his mother believes that he is possessed by the devil. Afterwards, they take him to a house by the sea for some rituals. Outside, Renato's father cries in disapproval, believing that Renato only needs to sleep with a woman to cure him of his foolishness. After the rituals, Renato's father takes him to a brothel, and inside, Renato carefully chooses before settling with a dark-haired escort. The two then move up to a room where they begin hooking up. Later on, the Allies now enter the town, freeing Castelcudo of German influence. Renato celebrates, and he happily rides one of the American jeeps. Suddenly, a group of women storms a building, and they pull out Milena. The women start beating her on the streets, and they tear off her clothes, publicly humiliating her. Horrified, Renato couldn't do a thing as the women cut her hair and curse her for sleeping with their husbands. Once they were done, Milena is left helpless and bloodied, crying out in pain and humiliation before the women cast her out of town. Shortly after, Renato rides to the train station and sees Milena boarding. Without ever speaking with the woman he yearns for the most, Renato watches her leave. In the cliff where he and his friends hang out, a miserable-looking Renato sits and stares at the record of the song he first heard in Milena's house and tosses it off the cliff and into the sea. 
Back in town, a car comes to a stop, letting a man step out of it. As he walks along the streets, the people recognize him, revealing the man to be Nino Scordia, Milena's supposedly dead husband. Renato follows Nino enter his former home, surprised to find refugees there and that his wife has disappeared. Renato continues to follow Nino while he makes his way into an American office. There, he relays what happened to him with Renato listening on. Nino then desperately asks the Americans to help him find his wife. With Renato still tailing him, Nino approaches former government officials, asking if they know where to find Milena. The officials just laugh, annoying Nino and making him confront the officials before one of them slaps Nino to the ground and leaves. Renato helps a broken up Nino to his feet, and with that, the man returns to his home. Sitting by the bed, Nino is in deep thought when suddenly, Renato drops a letter beside him. Nino tries to run after the boy, but he eventually reads the letter where he learns that Milena had always been faithful to him and that she left for Messina. With his discovery, Nino boards a train to Messina while Renato watches. Time passes, and the town goes on with its usual day. Renato is with a girl when everyone suddenly stops and stares at Nino, now reunited with his wife Milena, and together, they return to Castelcudo. The townspeople could only watch the couple in awe, and they ignore everyone as they head back to their home. Afterwards, in the market, Milena walks, and a dozen people stare at her, with everyone making comments as she moves from store to store. Two women stare at her, and Milena looks back then greets them. They greet her back, and suddenly, the people in the market begin to act normally again, going about their usual business. Once Milena finished shopping, Renato comes up on his bike, and he watches the object of his long-standing fixation walk home. On her journey home, some of the tomatoes fall from her bag. Renato helps her, causing his hand to brush against hers as he places the tomato back in her bag. Finally, he speaks to her and wishes her good luck. To this, Milena nods and walks away. As Renato watches her leave, he thinks about how, in spite of being with numerous women, the only one he will always remember is Milena. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.